What do you think? Uh, this is like the fourth or fifth try. <laughs> I ain't kidding. So, I think it turned out pretty good though. It's darker than the uh, OEM color, but I like it. This is actually a Ford color called Magnetic. And I think it will be a nice contrast to the uh, silver um, with the black seat, silver tail light, silver frame and stuff and then the black wheels i think it'll be kind of a nice um contrast uh yeah oh and then the yellow so the yellow you'll be able to see yellow a yellow spring in here and then it'll have like yellow um like a stripe like a little yellow block on the on the rim kind of down there you know just hanging off you know like the cool kids do as an accent until I can afford to get real pinstriping done. So, I think it'll be cool. I don't know. thought I would uh, show you how I was viewing the color coordination between the, well, the colors of the bike. So, you can kind of see how this pulls in the carbon a little bit and a little bit of the silver, and it has enough of the sort of a bronze-ish tinge to pull in the yellow, the shock, and then obviously I'll have that yellow accent on the um, wheels. But then the carbon also has, you know, it can have some yellow glints depending on the light uh, surrounding, as you can see right there. You can kind of see that. So hopefully this kind of illustrates what I was going for. Seen way better than this. Okay, I am really darn close on those scratches. Um, so I'm gonna have to go get some more um, finer grit sandpaper. Unfortunately, this this is way too coarse. This 120. You, some of you may be like, yeah, duh. I just. I've run out of the finer stuff and what I have left on the fine end is too fine. It's like 800 and 1000 grit, which is great for like, you know, really getting a nice finish, but absolutely awful when you're trying to do some uh, corrections. So you start to see those starting to show back up as the paint draws back in. You can see those. Now you, let me back up a little bit. You might see that, maybe, if I pointed it out to you. And honestly, if I wanted to, I could let that roll. And I am, there is gonna be a point when there's, it's just gonna be like d diminishing returns, right? It's gonna be like, well, you know, I can just keep going and going and going and just, it's just not gonna get any better. Um, and I'm not looking for perfection on something like this. I'm just not. I'm gonna be more um, scrutinizing specifically the sections that you're going to see plainly at, at closer to eye level. Something that's down like that, you're just not gonna notice. I mean, the OCD component we all have, knowing that it's there, that might bother me later, but anyways. Back to what I was saying about the, the sandpaper. Something like 220, 320, whatever the, the grits are, 200 to 300 in that range, probably gonna be better for sanding this. In fact, I think that the can even specifies what grit is best. Um, anyways, that's really hard to read, isn't it? It came like this, by the way. <laughs> that's how I, I bought it this way. Um, so, so what I've been doing is really 
lightly sanding with the 120, which still is not, that's just, it's too harsh. And so I have to back off and back off to the point where I'm barely making any effort or any, uh, any uh, real substantive change to the paint. And where, I, where I've messed up is, you know, I'm pressing too, too hard. Uh, and so the grit's digging into the primer and causing me more issues. So I've been defaulting to that. The problem with that, the scouring pad I'm pointing at, is that it, you know, when you're rubbing with your fingers, the curvature of your fingers and the, the way, you know, your skin moves around, that will actually go down into any imperfections in the paint and, and potentially make it worse. So as I'm scuffing with that, and it's great because it's very slow going, the problem is is that if, if the um, flex and give in my fingertips plus, you know, how spongy this material is, it's literally going into the crevices of the, the valleys of those indentations in the paint. Um, so, I'm kind of, I'm at a spot where I, I just, I have to make a call whether or not I'm going to go buy more, um, you know, a finer grit sandpaper to fix that or let it ride. Um, this might be good practice, you know, that I'm saying everything out loud, this, especially when I go to this side or this, this part and getting this done. Now, I want to say that on these components... There were some imperfections here and I did everything, literally all the sanding. Well, I take that back, almost all the sanding with the 3M uh, scouring pad stuff. I keep calling it scouring pad. This and I also I misstated. It's not 3M. It's Ace Hardware's version of cleaning and stripping pad. So this is what I bought. Bought a couple packages of the green and a couple packages of the red. And uh, I already mentioned, you know, the shortfalls with that. But what I ended up doing with these two um, stanchion bars, I guess you could call them. I don't really know what those are called, but the seat frame bars was that I, first I scuffed it with a green pad and then um, tried to get some imperfections done. Uh, used my, my block sander in the last bit of uh, medium grit, we'll call it. I had like, I think a 600 or something like that. I can't remember what, what I had. It might've been 400 grit. And I used the last bit of that fixing these and of course I dropped them and had to do everything basically over again. Long story short, um, with, with basically the, the tools that I had, I was able to get them in the state you see them now, which is not perfection, but for a used bike with 30,000 some odd miles on it, um, this is going to look fantastic. It's going to look really good. And the, the flaws are actually in the metal. So you can see right there that is likely from the seat rubbing up against it or something along those lines. Of course, the seat's gonna cover up uh, a great deal of that. You actually, I don't think you'll see that. I think the seat will completely cover that particular, um, I guess, wear mark, we'll call it, in the aluminum. But the, that's the nice thing about the darker color is that it allows you to um, hide a little bit more, I guess. Um, so, and then these, I didn't do anything. I just scuffed them and uh, painted. That was it. I did not do any any um, body work on any of those parts at all. So, anyways, I think I think this has gone long enough. Well, let's be a shorter video. It's just going to be more of the same, right? So maybe next time we come back, I should have the swing arm painted. Um, you may notice I have not taped anything off and I've been spraying primer and some of you are gonna probably say, oh no, you got paint in there. I got, I got acetone, okay? Breathe. I got acetone, that'll come right out. Um, unfortunately, when you're a dad 
and you have a garage and it has things in it, of course, lots of things right now, that kids like to use without dad's permission, things like painter's tape, grow legs and walk off, and no one seems to know what happened. Those of you who are dads know exactly what I'm talking about. I have this additional child named Not Me. And some of you watching right now, you are. You've been Not Me. You've been that kid. Don't be that kid. If you took your dad's stuff, fess up. Just give it back to him. All right, y'all. That's it. We're going to wrap it up. Until next time, peace out. Keep it between the ditches. Just for a minute, the natural progression of X and Pimbo.